Welcome to my lecture online. In the previous video we learned about clock corrections. We needed to make some corrections of the SV clock, the space vehicle clock, which is based on the atomic clock that's on the satellite itself. But we know that those clocks tend to drift over time, not by a lot, there are atomic clocks, but they're not as good as the earthbound atomic clocks, so they do drift over time. And in order to know exactly where the satellite is at and to know exactly its orbital parameters, we want to make sure that we pair up the satellite time with the actual GPS time. And that's why we need those clock corrections. So here's the equation. What we want to do here is we need to realize that the GPS time is equal to the space vehicle time minus some delta t. There's some difference. Turns out that due to various reasons, including relativistic reasons, the time on the SV drifts and also runs faster than the time on the Earth. And so those times are going to differentiate. They're going to uh, move apart over time. And so we need to know what the delta is, what the difference is between the two times at all times. Here's the equation where we calculate the delta T SV. In other words, the difference between the real GPS time and the time on the space vehicle. And notice it looks a lot like a quadratic equation. Some constant times this squared plus another constant times this to the first power plus a constant term plus a delta T for the relativistic effect. So we need to take care of that as well. So the three constants AF2, AF1 and AF0 belonging to the square term, the first power term and the zero power term they are sent in subframe 1 where it's 9 and 10. Of course that subframe is sent every 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds we get those parameters and they can be changed over time as necessary. Now we can calculate the difference so, oh no, now when you look at it, notice that instead of having, for example, x squared plus x and x to the zero power, we have t minus t o c squared. So what does that really mean? And first of all, wait a minute, we're trying to find the difference between these two times, so how can we use a value in here when it doesn't match up with TSV? But that's not a problem because we're not looking for a lot of fidelity here. T o c is called time of the clock and that's a running clock that runs through the entire week and resets every week so that goes from 0 to 604,800 on a week-to-week -week basis in numbers of seconds in a week and so we don't really care that there's a slight difference between these values so what we want to do here is we want to then use TSV so instead of using T we use TSV which is approximately equal than the value of T so that small little delta between the two does not make a play any role in the difference between these two values here so we can simply take TSV minus TOC and it is just about the same as having uh, T minus TOC because this will go into the value of several hours and therefore we don't really need to worry about a very very tiny subfraction difference between the two. So now you see that a T is approximately equal to TSV so instead of using T we're simply going to use SV and also realizing that we're going to do a check on the T of the, the time of the clock we want to make sure that the time of the clock matches up with the TOE. Now the TOE is what we call the time of ephemeris. We want to make sure that we're using the right value for the TOC, which is the time of ephemeris. In the next video, we'll give you more of an idea why we do that. So what is the GPS system time? Well, it is a continuously running time scale that doesn't have any leap seconds. So it just continues on second after second and is defined by the GCS. Now that's the GPS control segment on the, on the ground which makes sure that they keep that GPS time going continuously using a system of atomic clocks that are in sync with one another and so we make sure that that is a very accurate time. We make adjustments to that slightly if necessary but it's what we call the GPS time. And at one point in time it was synced up with the UTC at zero hours midnight of the night from the 5th to the 6th of January 1980. So that at that moment the GPS time and the UTC time, which is the universal time used on the Earth, they were exactly in sync at that time. Now of course we've been adding leap seconds to the UTC time, so slowly over time those two have differed and now they're differing by about 18 seconds or so. And that's not a problem because 
we keep track of that and we do t keep track of the difference between the GPS time and the UTC time so we can always make the proper adjustments there. Time SV is the time of the atomic clock on the SV and it drifts relative to the GPS time. It drifts for several reasons. One is that it's up there, uh, less gravitational force, moving quite fast. It has to adjust for the, uh, for the relativistic effects, both to speed and to the gravity. And so then there's also a drift of the clock itself relative to a very good atomic clock because they're not as big and as good, as good on the satellites as they, are, as they are on the Earth. So we need to account for that very general drift that occurs, the difference between the SV clock and the atomic clocks on the Earth. And then, of course, in order to calculate the exact orbital parameters of the SV, which is the ephemeris data that we're looking for, we need to know exactly how the satellite is moving, about speed, what angular speed, what the altitude is, what the eccentricity orbit is, all those various parameters. We need to know the exact parameters and the exact time so we know exactly where the satellite is at. If we're off by a few nanoseconds or by a few milliseconds, well, we're going to be off quite a bit on the knowing where the satellite is at. So we need to know the exact position so that our GPS can be as accurate as possible. And that's why we need to be able to calculate the delta TSV as best as we can. Now, on the next video, we're going to show you exactly how that is done. Well, we're going to need probably more than a few more videos, but you'll see in the next one what exactly is happening. Why do we need to know that? And so stay tuned and we'll give you the details of that in the next video.